We're thrilled to have Pastor Lancaster come back and preach for us this morning. Welcome, brother. Come on up here. And I'm going to let you use this mic. How can I say thanks for the things you've done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you prove your love for me. Voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude. All that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let me try it again, First Baptist. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are to rejoice in it and be glad. It is a good day to be alive. And it's a good day to be in God's house one more time. Thank you. Thank you, First Baptist, for uh, receiving me. And thank Pastor Scott for uh, the opportunity to be able to come uh, one more time. Are y'all ready for God's word today? Second, Second Chronicles, chapter 20 today. There's a word from the Lord. Second Chronicles. Chapter number, chapter number 20 today. Second Chronicles, chapter number, chapter number 20. When I'm driving up, Highway 17, whether I'm coming north or whether I am coming south, I always make sure that I look at the marquee of a First Baptist. I'm always looking for something that is informational. I'm looking for something that is inspirational. And I'm also looking for something that is invitational. Some of the reasons why you see me come for the Christmas cantatas, for the resurrection uh, activities, is because I saw it on the marquee. But not too long ago, as I was driving up Highway 17, I noticed that there was a sign, a word on the sign of the marquee that said breakthrough. I don't know, um, was Pastor Scott using it as a sermon? I don't know if he used it as a Bible study tool. But I remember that word breakthrough. And I asked the Lord, I asked the Lord, what did he want me to share with First Baptist? What did he want to say to me as, as I share with you? And the Lord wanted me to share with you that as we live this life, as we live this life, in order to have breakthrough, if you're going to live this life, if I'm going to live this life, in order to have breakthrough, I must keep in mind that first of all, you and I are going to have some burdens. If you and I are going to experience breakthrough, we've got to understand that not only in this life will we have burdens, but in this life, we will also have some bruises. But if you keep living, I want you to understand that in this life, not only will you have burdens, not only will you have bruises, but I want you to understand that if you're going to have breakthrough, and if I'm going to have breakthrough, listen today. We're also going to have battles. Now, now, it's not my assignment today. It's not my assignment to bake the cake and put icing on it. But it's my assignment today to take the cake that has already been baked and just put a cherry on top of it. Because listen, the Lord wants every single one of us to experience our own spiritual breakthroughs, our own emotional breakthroughs, our own financial breakthroughs, our own mental breakthroughs. And according to God's word, we are overcomers. And we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Well, as we look at the text today, as we look at the text today, as we look at the text today, um, this, this is nothing new to y'all. Um, I'm going to need my musicians. My piano player, come here for a second. Um, my guitar player, come here for a second. My, both, both of you, my guitar players. Um, where, where my drum at? Where my drum? Yeah, yeah. All right. If you look, if you look in verse number one, 
The Bible says that there were the children. There were the children of Amar. And then there were the children of Mount Seir. And you have Jehoshaphat, our drummer, all by himself. Believe it or not, if you are going to experience breakthrough, you've got to understand that there are times in your life where you're going to have to deal with Amon, Moab, and Mount Seir. You're going to be in the battle of your life, just like Jehoshaphat. Listen, I want to ask a question today. What are you going to do when the odds are stacked against you? What are you going to do when the odds Right, right, right now. It's, it's, it's one thing if Jehoshaphat had to just deal with Moab. It's one thing if he just had to deal with Mount Seir. It's one thing if he had to deal just with Amon. But he got to deal with all three of them. What, what do you do when the odds are stacked? Against you. If you look at verse number two, you'll see up front something that a that Josephat doesn't do. Jehoshaphat does not pretend like this is not affecting him. Unfortunately, that's what I love about my relationship with God I can try to fake it and make it with everybody else but I don't have to fake it and make it with God because God knows exactly where I am and can I tell y'all something God also, God also knows exactly where you are the word of God says that when Jehoshaphat gets the message that all three of them was against him, the Bible says, the Bible records that Jehoshaphat feared F E A. Why they ain't nothing but a big word to say he was scared. And I want y'all to know today that when we're inferior of something or somebody, when we're intimidated with something or somebody, it will cause us to be scared. It will cause us to be fearful. But Jehoshaphat, First Baptist, I don't care how many times we got a battle against Amon, Mount Seir, and Moab. We're not going to let them get the best of us if we want to have breakthrough. No matter how much the odds are stacked against us, we're not going to feel. We're not gonna fear. We're not gonna let. We're not gonna let fear get the best of us. And First Baptist, let me tell you why we don't have to let fear get the best of us. The reason why we don't have to let fear get the best of us is because we got Jesus, and Jesus got us. That's good news, isn't it? Paul tells his son Timothy in the faith. He says, "For God has not given us." The spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind. 
And listen, First Baptist, if you if you old school like I am, there's a hymn that I let resonate in my heart when I have those days. They're not fried days, but they're fear days. Listen, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds tomorrow. Life is worth the living just. Because of me. Unfortunately, you don't have to. Unfortunately, rather, we've allowed fear to literally get the best of us. But even when David was going through the valley, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death. So, for our time that is left, the question still remains. What is it that I'm supposed to do when the odds are stacked against me? Can I be honest with you? Your odds may be higher than my odds. My odds may be higher than your odds. But the fact still remains that when the Odds are stacked against us. Like Jehoshaphat, according to the word, there's something that we got to do. How many of y'all can admit, we have not got good, I know that ain't good grammar. I know we haven't gotten good yet into, into 2022. But can y'all admit whether it was January, February, or even March, there have been times the odds have been stacked against you? Well, Jehoshaphat shows us what it is we're supposed to do when the odds are stacked against us. Thank you. The first thing we got to do, the first thing we got to do, when the odds are stacked against us. Yes, Jehoshaphat feared, but watch what Je Jehoshaphat also does. When the odds are stacked against you and when the odds are stacked against me, watch what we got to do. You've got to pray. As simple as that sounds, unfortunately, we don't do enough. The word declares, men are to always pray and never faint on the way. No, notice, 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 Jehoshaphat doesn't panic. Jehoshaphat doesn't have a pity party. But Jehoshaphat does not waste any time and he goes and prays. To God. He goes and prays to God. He goes and prays to God. Because he says, God, I pray to you today because I realize that what I'm going through, the odds are stacked against me. The odds are stacked against my family. The odds are stacked against my friends. The odds are stacked against um, our government. Listen, he says, he says, he says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray to God. And I'm going to pray to God because I need God's attention. Not only do I need God's attention, he says, but in this situation, I need God's assistance because I can't do it on my own. When the odds stack against you, you got to be, you got to be fair. You got to be transparent. You got to be truthful with your own limitations. And part of your limitations and part of my limitations, guess what? There's only but so much you and I can do about 
our situations. But I want you to know today that we serve a God that even when I am limited, even when I am powerless, we serve a God that is able. And not only is he able, but he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. And then listen, if you tap into the right power, if I tap into the right power, I want you to know that he will give you what you need. Christ will. He will give you what you need to be able to handle any and everything that you go through. Watch what, watch what Paul says. Paul tells the church at Philippi. He says, um, I'm able to do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So, watch this. This is so serious because I want you to understand the odds are stacked against him. But when Jehoshaphat gets the announcement that Mount Seir, Amon, and Moab are about to battle against him, the battle is in Bowling Green. The, ba the battle is in Bowling Green fictitiously. The battle is in Bowling Green. But listen, they were coming from Ponte Gorda, but they were already in Wachula. They were coming from Winter Haven, but they were already in Fort Meade. But notice what he does. He says, being that I don't know what to do about what I'm going through, he says, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got to pray. Now the question is, question is, if you are going through a situation that you want to experience breakthrough, if you're going through a situation where the odds are stacked against you, the question is on the table right now, have you prayed? Really prayed. Really beseeched God. Really invited God into your situation. Not panic. Not power. But have you prayed? It's in the word, chapter number 20. Jehoshaphat gets the announcement that they're closer than he even imagines. The Bible says he fasts, and when he fasts, a young man comes to him. And says, listen, go into the city. Get yourself in position. Listen. First Baptist, what you've got to see and what I've got to see is that whenever the odds are stacked against us, you got to pray, but you also got to, number two, proceed. There is no time to be at a standstill. There's no time to do nothing. He prays. And he says, Lord, these are the same enemies. These are the same people that came against us before. And you told us to leave them alone. We left them alone. And look at what has happened now. They come back us again. And the Lord tells him the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. So in this life, in this life to experience breakthrough and for me to experience breakthrough, I've got to know the battles that are mine, and I've got to know the battles that belong to the Lord. Because if I try, and if you try to fight battles that belong to the Lord, the Lord let you have at it. And guess what? When it's all over, you are the one, I'm the one that's going to be getting tired.
Can any of you identify with that? Damn. You try to put things and handle things in your own hands, but you're the one that ended up on the losing end all because you wanted to do it your way. But he says, he says, he says, listen, they're coming, but what I want you to do is I want you to proceed, and as you proceed, I want you to get in in position and and listen. No, notice the Lord doesn't tell them to take their guns. He doesn't tell them to take their bullets. He doesn't take them. He doesn't tell them to take any type of artillery. The only thing he tells them to do is just to go and get in position. And listen, if you are to experience breakthrough, if I am to experience breakthrough, listen. Um, even when the odds are stacked against us. You and I have got to make sure that we, we, we proceed and we got to make sure that, watch this, we get in the right position for God to do what he wants to do in our lives. I'm closing. Listen. When the odds are stacked against us, when the odds are stacked against you, and listen, do you know it doesn't matter how long your name has been on the roll as a member of First Baptist? The odds will be stacked against you sometimes. Matter, doesn't matter how long you've been saved. Doesn't matter if you were baptized yesterday or years ago. The odds will be stacked against you. And the odds will be stacked against me. But watch what Jehoshaphat does. Watch what those that they fast, they pray. But watch this. The text says to us that number one, they prayed. Number two, they proceeded. But then number three, watch this. They praised God. They praised God in the midst of a battle. They didn't praise God when they got out of the battle. They praised God while they were in the midst of the battle. That says something to you. That says something to me. They had not won the battle yet. They had not gotten the victory yet. But they praised God. As if they already had it. That's what God wants you to do. That's what God wants me to do. God wants you to get to the point in your life. And God wants me to get to the point in my life. Listen, the odds stacked against you. You don't like the report that the, that the doctors are giving you? Praise God. Praise God like you already got your healing. Daughter in trouble. Son is in trouble. It happens. But praise God. Like they're getting out of the trouble already. So that, that, that's, 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 watch this. Advanced praise. Because our praise is not automatic. Usually we want to praise God in the good times. But God says, no, I want you to learn how to praise me, whether it's good or whether it's bad. There, 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 are, some, there are some tires, if you go to tire shop, there are some tires that says all seasons. God wants you to learn how to praise him in all seasons of your life. When it's, when it's down, when it's up. And listen, listen, I can't wait for the guitar to go. I, I can't wait till the drum start playing. I can't wait till the keyboard or the piano starts playing. I, I can't wait till that. 
because the guitar player, the pianist, the drummers, they don't know what I'm praising God for. And they don't know what I'm expecting from God. So my prayers, my praise has to be personal. Your praise has to be personal. So he, he praises God. He praises God. The people of Judah. Judah, Judah means praise. As they praise, as they praise, watch this. As they praise, God is working. God is working. God is working. So, believe it or not, while there were members of First Baptist praising God over here, the praise team was singing. As people were praising God while the praise team was singing, as people were praising God over here, lifting your hands and lifting your voices, I want y'all to know that God was working some things out in your life. Pastor, show it to us. It's in God's work. It's in God's work. God, God is working while they're praising him. God is working while, they, while they're praising him. Let, let, let's take it home. Come, just come here again. Um, my, my, um, Jehoshaphat, come on. Come on, Jehoshaphat. Y'all just stand away. Y'all just stand away. Listen. You got to pray. You got to proceed. But you got to, you got to, you got to praise. Now, um, now don't scare nobody, okay? But just act like you're praising God. Just, just with, I mean, on them drums. I like you, I, oh, yeah. No, 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 don't get on drums. But act like you're praising God on it. Like, just, just praise God. Lift your hands, come on. Lift, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. Come on, lift your hands, come on. Uh, yeah, all of that. Lift your, lift your hands. I want, I don't want y'all to miss this. Now you got to keep, yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, lift your hands. I surrender all. Yeah, you know. <laughs> all right, we don't got no police in here, do we? Okay, you're not going to jail. Okay, all right. All right. This is you. This is me. Praising God while the battle is going on. This is you. This is what God wants us to be doing. Lifting our hands, lifting our voices. Not, see, praising God is not a spectator sport. I, I don't need to be looking at you. You don't need to look at me. Praising God is participatory. All of us should be, because guess what? I don't know about y'all, but I didn't come here to stay. One day, I'm going to leave here. And when I leave here, I'm leaving here to go be with Jesus. And when I leave here to go be with Jesus, can I tell you, the only thing they are doing in heaven right now is praising God. Giving God the glory. So guess what? This is nothing but a rehearsal. So if, if I don't want to praise God in the first Baptist, I'm going to be out of place in heaven. All hail the power of Jesus. Now. Let angels, I, I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Can I, can I be honest with you? Up in heaven, there's not going to be no sanctuaries. No, there's not going to be no brick and mortar. But we're going to be bowing down in praise to him. But watch this. You got to praise him, buddy. Come on. You got to praise him. While you're praising him. While you're praising him. While you are lifting your hands. While you're surrendering. God is working. Remember that God is working. Watch this. Jehoshaphat 
never had to worry about them fighting him. Jehoshaphat never had to worry about all three of them fighting him. You know why? Because they started fighting each other. Y'all gonna fight each other. Yeah, 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 yeah come, come. They, 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 they. So, so, so here it is. He's praising God. God's working. And they fight each other. Isn't God amazing? Isn't God awesome? That God says, listen, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And I let them fight each other. I let them fight each other. But you got to don't be looking You should be lifted. Celebrate what God has done in your life. And guess what? The reason why you can expect breakthrough, the reason why you can expect that these odds are not going to get the best of you, because guess what? This is not the first time you've been through a battle in your life. This is not the first time you've been through some burdens that you've had burdens in your life. This is not the first time you've had some bruises in your life. The same God that gave you what you needed the first time is the same God that can do it. Again. We're closing. We're closing. We're going we to test your praise the Lord skills. You, you know, you know um, the hymn, Blessed Assurance? Okay. okay. But y'all know Blessed Assurance, don't y'all? Yeah, yeah, y'all know. Now, you know we don't go up now. You got to play now. now. Yeah, you got to play now. Yeah, you got to play now. As we close today, as we close, um, we want to um, extend an invitation. Um, there may be someone today um, that stands in the need of prayer because um, the odds are stacked against you. And before you came in here, you didn't know what you would do. You didn't know how you would do it. But through the word has shown us that we got to pray, we got to proceed, but we got to praise. Let's stand.